What will it cost for the Lions to keep Jeff Okuda around in two years? We'll tell you coming up next. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It's a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, Wednesday, February 8th and Thursday, February 9th. Thanks for hanging out with us, making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the show today, the Jeffrey Okuda conundrum. The Lions have until May 1st, after free agency, after the draft, to decide whether or not they're going to pick up his fifth-year option. Today, the league announced what that would cost the Lions. We'll tell you about that coming up next. Also, yes, a Lion is guaranteeing that our team, this team, your team, is going to win the NFC North next year. We will play you that audio coming up momentarily and a nugget as well on the Super Bowl. It is Super Bowl week as uh, we welcome you into a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions. You can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. And as always, check us out on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you get the show every day and your comments are always welcome. Locked On Lions today is brought to you by Nissan. The only thing more exciting than the big game this Sunday is the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. There's only four days until the Super Bowl. Are you ready? The Nissan Aria, the EV for people, the electric vehicle for people who love to drive. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. All right, so where do we start today? Um, I want to get to this audio clip momentarily. Shout out to my guy, Mike Vanderpool, Heart of a Lions fan, who hooked me up with this this shirt. Hold on, let me stand up so people can see it. Kind of a cool Lions shirt. I know I've also got a couple of calls I've got to make to other people who have offered me Lions swag and gear, so everybody bear with me. I'm trying to represent and wear as much Lions stuff as I can during the show because many of you called me out for my guardians gear my syracuse stuff my indiana stuff my iu stuff so uh, bear with me all right so jeff okuda the nfl today released what the numbers would look like for each position and certain tiers of player and what it would cost teams to keep that player on their fifth year option for 2024 if you recall The Lions had to sign Taylor Decker to his fifth-year option. Uh, TJ Hawkinson re-upping, things like that. This time around, the Lions have until May 1st to decide whether or not they want to pick up Jeffrey Okuda, the cornerback's fifth-year option for 2024. As of right now, Jeff Okuda is coming back next year to play in year four of his rookie contract for the Lions. If you remember, Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell did not draft Jeff Okuda at number three overall. That was done by one maestro, Uh, Bob Quinn. And so the Lions have got to decide by May 1st if they want to pick up the fifth-year option on Okuda or he becomes a free agent after 2024. So Albert Breer was the first to report today uh, on his Twitter that the Lions' fifth-year option for Jeffrey Okuda would cost the team for 2024 $11.5 million. Okuda falls into the option four category, meaning Uh, He wasn't in the Pro Bowl, so he's eliminated from options one and two. And this comes from prideofdetroit.com. His Achilles injury limited his playing time, so he's not eligible for option three. So option four category, cornerback, $11.5 million. That's what he would cost the Lions um, next season. As Eric Schlitt wrote for prideofdetroit.com, quote, there are a few important factors to consider when determining if the Lions should pick up Okuda's option. Number one, the entire contract is guaranteed in 2024 as a base salary, which means if the Lions pick up Okuda's option, then later decide to release him, they'd be on the hook for that money would take a cap hit of $11.5 million. Also, while releasing him is not an ideal option, they could trade him, and that guarantee and the guarantees would travel with him to his new team because the salary is guaranteed as a base, not a bonus. 
just like what happened with the TJ Hawkinson trade this past season. Again, thanks to the folks at Pride of Detroit, Eric Schlitt. I read them every day. Check them out at prideofdetroit.com. It's some good intel. Here's some stuff that I looked up uh, today as far as pro football focus. First and foremost, Jeffrey Okuda had a pretty decent season for the Lions, but what was concerning was that at the start of the year, he shuts down Justin Jefferson, has a great game in Week 3 against the Vikings. He had a PFF grade of 86 Point nine in the Dallas game, but in the second half of the year, Okuda's numbers went down, and in three of the last five games, according to Pro Football Focus, he graded out in the 40s, which is not good for a starting player. His PFF score for the season was 59.1, All right, which is not great, but it's certainly better than his first two years when he graded in the low 50s and I think in the 40s as a rookie. And again, as a rookie, he barely played because he was hurt. Just to make a comparison, so he was, if you look at the regular snaps that were taken by cornerbacks, so let's say a minimum of 600 snaps and and higher. Okuda had 789 snaps this year. Remember, he missed a couple of games due to injury. And he was benched for a couple games. He finished 54th in the league as a cornerback. He was rated 54th by PFF in terms of regular snaps for cornerbacks. If you just go by every cornerback that hit the field this year in the NFL, there were 235 of them that played in a game and got some snaps at corner, and Okuda graded out as 130th. But I like the grade better of the regular snaps, starters, nickel guys, third corners that got some snaps, played about 600 or more snaps. Uh, um, um, You know, you could use Mike Hughes of the Lions as an example. Mike Hughes had a grade of 59.9. His was actually higher than Okuda, and he had about 500-plus snaps this year. Okuda had 789 snaps and finished 54th. So if you're the 54th best cornerback in the NFL, should you be making $11.5 million in a season? No. <laughs> Hell no. In three of the last five games, he graded out in the 40s. Not good. You have a rookie in Sauce Gardner who was selected around the same time as Jeff Okuda years later, obviously, three years later, two years later, and he led the entire NFL. In, in or in entire PFF is the highest graded cornerback. Patrick Sertan was second. Jalen Ramsey, I know people want to trade for Jalen Ramsey, was third. Charvarius Ward was fourth, and Tyson Campbell of the Jacksonville Jaguars was fifth. Those were your top five graded out corners from profootballfocus.com. Okuda was 54th. Started off strong this year, had a really good season. But would you pay him $11.5 million in two years for his fifth-year option? This is a very tough question. I mean, I wouldn't pay him that money, but what else are you doing at cornerback if you're the Lions? So let's, let's discuss this more coming up next, and then I want to play you some audio of a Lion today guaranteeing the team is going to win the NFC South. Matt Derry with you. And we are brought to you today by our friends at Ultimate Football GM. You've heard me talk about this mobile game app, and I can't tell you how much fun we had competing against the fellow Locked On NFL hosts all year. Shout out to Chris Carter of Locked On Steelers. He was our Locked On NFL champion. All right, now it's your turn. You can compete as well. But more on that later. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, Your dream can come true with Ultimate Football GM. Your responsibilities for controlling the team include hiring coaches and assistant coaches, trading players, you're like the GM, navigating your franchise through free agency in the draft, and all the ups and downs of a season. All right? All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. You can play on the go on your phone as you want and when you want to. Uh, we've created the Locked On League for you to compete against Locked On fans all over the world. Can you be the ultimate fo- uh, Locked On football GM? Choose Locked On League, the Locked On League, in the app to join. 
and create a football dynasty. Locked On Lions listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code LOCKDOWN, that's in all caps, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, in the game store. That's LOCKDOWN in all caps to make sure you can check it out today and hop on. Download the game by visiting ultimate-footballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-footballgm.com. Sorry, ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, so the Okuda conundrum again. If you look where the Lions sit right now, they don't have to make a decision until May 1st on what to do with Jeffrey Okuda for 2024. Um, This regime did not draft him. This regime uh, has said nothing but good things. And it seems like, seems like uh, Aaron Glenn is going to stay. I don't know if he's getting the Colts job or not. We still don't know. But you got to figure... The Lions, with one of their two picks at 6 or 18, could go cornerback. Amani Oruwarie is not going to be back, I wouldn't think, uh, because he had a really bad year. Mike Hughes, Will Harris, Jerry Jacobs. um, You always need more corners. We had Brett Whitefield on yesterday, and uh, he talked about it from Fantasy Points. You you, you never have enough cornerbacks. I know the Lions feel like Chase Lucas, a guy they drafted this past year, what, the seventh round, may end up being something. Um, but, you know, they're mixing and matching all the time. But you want to have that shutdown guy. You want to have that guy that takes away half the field. And for points of the first half of the season, it looked like Okuda arrived. My goodness, he held Justin Jefferson in week three to like 18 yards, 24 yards receiving. The tackling that he did in the open field – Dallas game, Seattle game, he had a big game. Um, and you, you're you like, finally, we're seeing what this number three overall pick can do when healthy. And then this year, for some odd reason, late in the season, benched. Um, you know, Will Harris was playing more. Jerry Jacobs was playing more. Then he got in the Green Bay game, and I think it was uh, Okuda was out, didn't play. Um, and was scratched before the game. I would not pay him $11.5 million in two years. No way. I think the Lions are likely going to decline that option. But again, we need to see what they're going to do in free agency. Would they trade for Jalen Ramsey? Will they go out and get Jamel Dean, who's a top 10, top 15 corner from Tampa Bay? Will they go find one of Brad Holmes' old buddies from the Rams? I mentioned Ramsey. Uh, Will they draft some of the kids from um, Maryland or Illinois? There's corners all over from the Big Ten that we're playing right in our backyard here. Um, That would then put a lot of pressure on Okuda to have to to perform and play for a contract this year, which might not be a bad idea. But again, first half of the year, what were we saying? Finally, we got our shutdown guy. Finally, we got the guy. But $11.5 million? The Lions weren't even willing to pay TJ Hawkinson that money. And he went off to Minnesota And he was great. And we thought when the Lions let TJ Hawkinson walk, or they traded him, excuse me, last year, not wanting to, even though they picked up his option um, last offseason, but still, they didn't want to pay him, pay him, pay him. But the Lions seem to be just fine with Brock Wright, Shane Zilstra, and James Mitchell. If you were to trade Jeffrey Okuda, that, that cornerback is, I'm sorry, a more important spot than tight end. So that's where I'm at on the Okuda situation. It's interesting. Again, as far as regular corners, you only graded out 54th. That's not $11.5 million a year type money. Not worthy of that. By the way, uh, and I want to play you this audio from um, A Lion in a minute, but Super Bowl's coming up, and I know we'll talk about it uh, in the next couple of days, maybe more in depth. I see one, the the storyline of Nick Sirianni being fired by Andy Reid and the way Sirianni carries himself and the way Sirianni coached the Eagles against the Colts and at the end of the game was like going back behind the bench to Colts fans and taunting them. 
for his friend Frank Reich being fired like the week before. Then in the postgame, Sirianni going off on the Colts for firing Frank Reich. I think Sirianni is going to be coaching with a huge chip on his shoulder. Not that he dislikes Andy Reid. He has said Andy Reid and him have talked. He loves Andy Reid. Andy Reid's a great guy. But in 2012, when Andy Reid took the Chiefs' job, he was told by a couple of people, you got to hold on to the wide receivers coach. This Nick Sirianni is something. He fired him. He didn't hold on to him. He let him walk. Sirianni ended up going to the Chargers and everything else. But I think Sirianni's going to play that card. I just have the feel. I have a good feeling about the Eagles this weekend. I could be wrong, but uh, I do. All right, coming up next, you'll hear from a Detroit Lion. I'm not saying that this Lion is angry, but or or, or putting himself out there for bulletin board material. But he's picky. He's, he's putting himself out there that the Lions are going to win the NFC North. He's guaranteeing it almost. But first, a couple of reads here. Let's tell you about prize picks. Been telling you about them for a long time. Daily Fantasy, making entries. Last night, I don't know what the projection was on LeBron James, but if it was around 36, 37 points, would you have gone below or above it? He got to the 36. He broke Kareem's record. And you could do that each and every night with NBA, NHL, college football, NFL, NHL, whatever it is, college basketball, with prize picks. It's a lot of fun. You pick two to six players, and if they score more or less in their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections. All right? Michigan, Nebraska, college hoops tonight. Ooh, how many points will Hunter Dickinson score? 17, 18? I think it's going to be under, over, whatever. You can do that tonight at prize picks. Download the app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play Daily Fantasy Sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKDOWN. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKDOWN at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. And hey, I don't have my wrapper with me, but Built Bar is back in my rotation, baby. I love me some Built Bars. I had the salted caramel bar this morning. I'm even going to take one to my guy Gunner over at Edge Fitness so he can try them. But if you're looking for a delicious treat, don't want all the calories and everything else, you got to try Built Bars. They are fantastic. Whether you get the regular bars that are covered in 100% real chocolate or the Built Puffs, which are the marshmallow uh, puff type of thing, like, you know, like a peep, they are awesome. Try churro, peanut butter brownie, or my favorite cookies and cream. And what's great now is you can get Built Bars at Walmart. And at Sam's Club. That's right. If you're close to uh, making a Sam's Club run, grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. Or just go to Built.com. Got to try Built Bars. They are absolutely the best. All right, I got to play you this audio clip. Yes, Jamal Williams being interviewed at the Super Bowl was on first take today with Stephen A. Smith and Mad Dog, Chris Russo. Mad Dog, all right? And uh, Jamal Williams, hold on, we got to play this. Uh, Hold on. Jamal Williams, earlier today, was asked about the Lions' chances next season. Take a listen to this. Next year, it gets very, very interesting, particularly with y'all, Green Bay, if Aaron Rodgers stays, and of course, Minnesota. What are your thoughts? Uh, It don't matter. We we taking the North. (laughs) The change has started. Like, the tide of the season change has started. So, that's what I'm saying. You kept the offensive coordinator. All right, there it was. We taken the North. Jamal Williams on first take on ESPN today, that audio courtesy of ESPN. Lions running back, free agent, by the way. Jamal Williams, he's going to be back. You know he is. How about this? We take in the North. The trash talk is beginning. If there's somebody that backs up trash talk, it's Jamal Williams. But what do you think about that? Do you like that? Do you want Lions players to be openly putting it out there that they're going to win, making that prediction. Now, again, 
He had a smile on his face. He was having fun. But, I, you know, the Lion players, I'm sure, are tired of hearing about Minnesota because the Vikings won the division. They kept winning all those close games. Lion players have been hearing about Aaron Rodgers for years. All right? All the Lions did this year was beat Aaron Rodgers not once but twice. But here's a player predicting we're taking the North. And you know what? For the first time in a long time, I'm not bothered by it. Sometimes I'd be like, ugh, Lions are talking again. Lions love to talk, but they don't back it up. This team, under this coach, back ups, backs up their talk. It's not just chatter. It's not just empty words. They said what they were going to do this year. They talked about how tough they were going to be, and they were. So does Jamal Williams say, we take in the North, bother me? No, it doesn't. But Lions being put on national shows and being the the, the bell of the ball a little bit, being the, the popular guy or girl at the party, I dig it. I have no issue with it. So good for Jamal Williams. He threw it out there. Will it be bulletin board material? I don't know. It's February. <laughs> the season doesn't start till September. But uh, there it was. Jamal Williams putting it out there. We're winning the North. We take in the North. We're back again tomorrow for a Thursday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen.